news, breaking news, breaking news. P. Diddy's free cough requirements examined as new shocking claims surface. Sit back, watch this joint. We got an assistant that's coming out speaking, saying she walked around with a scale in the car so that she could pull it out. We girls didn't want no girls over 140 pounds. Didn't want no girls with cellulite. Didn't want any, you know, um, you know. It's, they, they couldn't have short hair. They had to be a straight dime with long hair. If you subscribe, subscribe. If you're not, hit the notification bell. Let's get this party popping. All right. All right, you know what it is. Unique Mac Audio, man. I'm here. This is about Diddy's free cough. Sit back, watch this joint, pay attention all the way to the end. This is the requirements for the females to be in the Diddy free cough. All right? Shocking details continue to emerge about what allegedly went on at Sean Diddy Combs' freak off parties. And we're learning what it took to get on the list of the alleged drug and alcohol fuel party. According to a report by the New York Post, one party planner said the women invited were subjected to a weight requirement. And Diddy was seemingly picky about the women who attended the notorious freak offs. One anonymous party planner who claimed she worked with the embattled music mogul told the New York Post she kept a scale in her car to make sure no female guests weighed more than 140 pounds. Okay, I want to ask this, right? You invited to go to a party and the girl says, I have to weigh you because you might be too heavy. How do you respond to that? Do you go to this party? Do you get on this scale, first of all? I mean, just listen to how this is playing out. And you're trying to tell me when people heard these things that they didn't feel a certain way or they was just felt like they hit the jackpot or the super million dollar prize because they was invited to the party? She told the Post, we would do a weigh-in if necessary. The girls had to be young and hot, so I always had a scale nearby in case I needed to make sure. The number was 140 pounds, but if a girl was really tall, there was a little bit of discretion involved. The anonymous party planner told the outlet there were other requirements too, like no flab, no cellulite, the women couldn't be overly pierced or tattooed, they couldn't have short hair, and the girls had to be young and hot. And the women had to dress to impress the mogul. The planner said no pants, no jeans, no flat shoes, everyone had to be in stilettos, every girl had to wear a party dress that was preferably short, but long enough to cover their butt. However, However do that sound like a crime to you if, like, like a bunch of the homies, we got a party going at night, so a bunch of homies want to go because they know I was invited. So they say, yo, you, what's the dress code, you know? So if the female calls her friend and she said, what's the dress code? And she tell her, no flats, you got to wear stilettos, you got to wear dress, you can't wear jeans, you can't wear sweats, you know, you can't have, you know, short hair, whatever. You know what I mean? Is that a crime? Does that make you feel like something is going on somewhere? I mean, just let me know because I'm a little confused right now. All right? Because that sounds like a dress code to me. However, it couldn't be longer than mid-thigh and the cleavage has to show. As Combs has been locked up since his arrest and more lawsuits have been filed against the mogul, some Jane and John Doe's allege they were minors at the time of the alleged assault. Hey, yo, picture this, right? Because, you know, I was in that situation because I was even in NBC, right? You know this like for Diddy right now, not only sitting in the cell, knowing that he lost everything from being on his $68 million yacht, from jet setting in his private jets and throwing the elaborate parties, and now he's sitting in a cell, know that they done indicted him on this indictment and he's waiting to see what's going to happen. And then here comes the lawyer walking up and he hands him another stack of papers and say, you got some more lawsuits. He looking like, what? And be like, yeah, a hundred victims. Imagine what Diddy's thinking about in that cell. They really need to have that people watching to make sure nothing goes around his neck. Because that's a lot for any man to go through. You know what it's like when you're doing time and they come and pick you up. 
and say, we've taken you back to court. And you get back to court and go in front of the judge and they got a whole new charge for you. Now you're looking even more time when you was already comfortable accepting the life plus 20. They know that that's all I got to fight. But now they say, no, we're giving you another charge that you can get another life sentence on. That's what they sitting there doing with Diddy, even though it's civil suits we're talking about right now. But they will be bringing out the superseding indictment just like they did with Little Dirk. So go watch the Little Dirk joints so you can see what's going on. You understand? And uh, I just put it out so you can go check out that Little Dirk joint and see what's going on with the Little Dirk joint. All right, let's get back to this video. All right. The party planner admitted to the post they never asked how old the girls were. The anonymous party planner said it was a don't ask, don't tell situation. She said she was young herself during that time and thought they weren't asking their ages because of drinking laws. Another source told the post she was a dancer who performed at the Bad Boy Records founder's 2005 VMA after party. She also remained anonymous, but told the outlet she was paid $250 to dance at the after party, but was told there was an extra $1,000 for her if she went to the mogul's house later for more dancing. She said she was just 20 years old at the time and said ultimately she didn't go to his home, but said she knew other girls who did, but they wouldn't really talk about what happened there. I want to thank Upside for... All right, so that's where we at right now. They're going to thank Upside, and we're going to go where we're going to talk about what's happening over here. How do y'all feel about this Diddy joint is what I want to know right now. How do y'all feel? Do you think that all this is even possible, what's going on? I mean, talk to me. Let me know, you know, so that we could all, you know, be abreast to what's going on. All right, so... Diddy done lost everything from private planes to yachts to everything else to now he's sitting in a jail cell. Let's get back into what's going on with him and his situation. All right. Center of the government's case against the mogul. After his arrest on charges of sex trafficking, racketeering conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution, the now disgraced mogul pleaded not guilty to the charges and continues to deny all wrongdoing. And following his arrest in mid-September, the mogul faces several civil lawsuits from women and men across the country who allege he sexually assaulted them during his exclusive parties. In one of the most recent batch of lawsuits he faces, the backdrop of his accuser's rape was an after-party at the 2000 VMAs. One lawsuit filed by a woman under the moniker Jane Doe alleged she was just 13 years old when the hip-hop producer drugged and raped her with another unnamed male celebrity, and they took turns watching with an unnamed female celebrity. All right, all right so I got a question, right? Just, 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 just a simple question. How did a 13-year-old even get to this party? She walked up the Beverly Hills Road and up the Beverly Hills driveway. And I, or should the people or person or persons that brought her there also be held accountable? Let's get this going. 13 year old said she was at a Diddy party. Diddy parties in Mansons. How many people walk up to a Diddy party? Somebody had to bring it in, or she had a 13 year old license, or a stolen car, or a license. I don't know. And some of the plaintiffs, who include men who have filed lawsuits against the mogul, allege his infamous white parties weren't just a place for celebrities to mix and mingle. Another suit filed by a John Doe who lives in North Carolina alleged he was just 16 years old when he was recruited to attend the mogul's infamous white party in the Hamptons. Mm. He claims while at the party, he spoke with Combs about his Hollywood dreams. However, Diddy allegedly told him he needed to inspect his penis because it was a rite of passage for anyone trying to break into the industry. Now... That's where you're supposed to just hook off. You know what I mean? Doe alleged Combs cupped his genitals for an extended period of time. And Hold up. <laughs> An extended period of time? And told him people would be in touch with him. Oh. Another John Doe, who said he was a security guard at the infamous party, alleged Combs sexually assaulted him. Combs has denied all the allegations against him. In a statement his attorneys wrote, in court the truth will prevail that Mr. Combs has never sexually assaulted anyone, adult or minor, man or woman. According to Combs' federal indictment, the freak offs were elaborate and produced sex performances and were highly organized parties. According to federal prosecutors, Combs used his associates to book hotel suites, recruit sex workers, and distributed various drugs to coerce partygoers into sex and keep them obedient. The government alleges Combs recorded the drug field orgies and watched them for his own pleasure. 
But the indictment wasn't the first time we've heard of the freak-offs. They were first mentioned in Cassie's jaw-dropping lawsuit that was filed in federal court last November and settled within a day. However, according to Combs' attorneys, the so-called freak-offs were consensual and said the individuals who participated wanted to be there. But eventually, it'll be up to a jury to decide the mogul's fate, as Diddy will ultimately have to answer to his alleged crimes in trial, which is slated for next year. Let's bring on criminal defense attorney Safa Robinson Ferrer to get a take on these claims. Now, Safa, it's always great to see you. What's the reaction to this anonymous party for Diddy, who says she put a scale in her car to weigh women who were entering Diddy's parties and freak off parties? Yeah, I, I'm a little surprised by this. Um, and the only reason I say that is because whoever this person is, although they're having this conversation and remaining anonymous, she's essentially admitting to having participation in these alleged freak-offs. So she's kind of putting herself on the hook to come under this RICO umbrella or a conspiracy umbrella as being a participant of that alleged activity that Mr. Combs is charged with. You know, there, there's information that leads me to believe that she's had a conversation where she's admitted to keeping a scale in her car, making sure that these women who attended these parties were no more than 140 pounds and that she was there to ensure that they met that weight requirement. Um, she had a lot of information about, you know, what these women were allowed to wear and not to wear, the descriptions that these women should look like, you know, in terms of physical appearance. And so it's very interesting to me that she's had this conversation, whoever this woman is, although she's asked to remain anonymous, she's certainly putting herself on the hook to be a part of this RICO charge and conspiracy um, in having these conversations and admitting to her own participation. And the requirements that she alleged were made kind of sound like a magazine cover from 2005. Be young and hot, wear high heels, no cellulite, no flab, can't be overly pierced or tattooed, can't have short hair. What do you make of that? And also with that being said, if this anonymous party planner was somebody who helped organize these freak off parties, even though she says she never, or excuse me, even though she said she left before the freak offs actually happened, does that still apply that she could be charged potentially under this RICO indictment? Absolutely. She's made herself a, a party to this action, for lack of a better way to put it. And although she's not a party to the United States of America versus Sean Diddy Combs, she certainly has made herself a witness by making these sorts of statements and admitting to this sort of participation in these freak offs. Um, and so that's a part of the conspiracy is that there is a group of people who actually who do certain things in order to bring about a certain result. So these freak off parties where there's alleged to have been women or people who have been intoxicated, who have been forced into sex with sex workers and things of that nature. If this particular person was at the outset or at the beginning of this, this experience of checking people in, making sure that they're appropriate weight requirements and things of that nature. And yes, she may have left, but she also aided in facilitating those things that ultimately went on if what she is saying is true. Um, so she definitely is putting herself out there um, and she could certainly be held responsible. At minimum, the federal government is going to want to speak to whoever this witness is if they haven't already to gain additional information. And like I said, she, she's a witness at this point based mm. on what she said. According to this report, you know, the guests were asked about their weight, but they weren't asked about their age. And this source claims it was because of drinking laws and some some of the lawsuits that we're seeing that involve minors. You know, it just seems like when we're kind of comparing them, it just seems like overall there wasn't a care to ask these young women and even these young men their age when they're surrounded by Diddy and other adults who are using alcohol, who are using drugs at these types of parties. But why do you think that they didn't ask the simple question, hey, how old are you? Because the people that was bringing them were supposed to make sure they're bringing people of age. If they brought somebody on the age, that means they're on some freaky time, their intentions is freaky, or they didn't know what was going to go on when they went there, but then it was going to be drinking. Delts, come on. Y'all put it in the comments what you think. Let's not be naive here. Two words, plausible deniability. I think that what a lot of people do is that they think that if they don't know or if they don't ask the question, like, how old are you, that that removes them from any liability because they don't know. So, you know, I, I that would be my opinion as to why they maybe didn't ask. 
um, to keep themselves out of the loop. Well, I didn't know how old she was, so, you know, I can't be charged or I can't be liable, which is actually untrue. Um, not only that, if these individuals were underage and there's drinking and they're drinking as a part of the party with, you know, Mr. Combs and whoever else, there's certainly a question, at least in the state of New York, as to whether they could have been charged at that point in time with endangering the welfare of a child and a list of other charges with respect to that alleged activity. Um, but I think that oftentimes people don't want to ask the question because they want to be able to deny it later or act as they are oblivious, like ignorance is bliss. Um, but they can still be held responsible, certainly. So I think that would be why those questions weren't asked, if that's the case, um, to avoid that. Yeah, and it was interesting that the source says that there was kind of a don't ask, don't tell policy when it came to that. You know, and we've done so many reports on Diddy and kind of at the center of the government's case has always been these freak offs in the indictment um, that we have right now. There are only three charges, but how important are the freak offs in the overall nature of the government's case? They're really important. And one thing I actually want to know, um, kind of to your question before, was, you know, it's alleged that the government executed these search warrants and that they're in possession of videos of these freak offs. Um, I would note that Mr. Combs has not been charged with anything related to anybody that's been underage. So that's one thing to think about here. Um, so whether or not that's in fact true will remain a question until we get more information or as we start to head towards trial. Um, but these freak offs are going to be important because what we seem to know at this point is that these alleged freak offs took place with, you know, men and women. They took place with sex workers who may have been transported across interstate lines, which that is one of the requirements for a specific statute um, with regard to trafficking. And not only that, but that these individuals, some of them who were held against their will, uh, or were drugged or forcibly were forced to engage into the sexual activity and things of that nature. So those three thoughts are going to be very key here with respect to, you know, the trafficking charge at least. We still have the additional charge where we have victim one, um, and that is separate and apart, but it's also taken in conjunction with those three thoughts to paint a bigger picture. And they it sort of create the narrative or weave in the facts to show that, you know, Mr. Combs allegedly this was the type of person he was. These were the types of things that his enterprise engaged in. They had done it with, you know, one female victim or victim one, if, if it is a female victim. And not only did he do it with this specific victim, but he's also done it with other individuals. And that victim one may have also been a party to these freak offs, which there appears to be evidence that he's transported sex workers across interstate lines and engaged with a number of individuals in those freak offs. And, you know, a Diddy party before was such a lucrative event, and it seemed like the go-to place to be if you're a celebrity. But if you're looking at all of these lawsuits, it appears that, you know, it was a breeding ground for rampant sexual violence. And I'm talking about the lawsuits here and not the federal indictment. Given all these suits and with this latest batch involving minors, can Diddy's defense team, and again, I'm talking about the lawsuits here, can they really claim that this was consensual? Like, what are really the defenses here to the staggering amount of lawsuits on top of the federal indictment? Yeah, you know, I think that that Mr. Combs attorneys are essentially going to have to say that, you know, if any activity did in fact occur. And so I, I guess we'll step back for a second. Are They're going to either, either deny that those things happened and do away with some of the lawsuits if they are frivolous. Um, and there will be facts and circumstances that are determined, you know, according to law on those. If they did, in fact, occur, their argument is more than likely going to be that these acti this activity was consensual, that this person was a willing participant. And not only that, but that these individuals assumed the risk of being present at those parties, of engaging and voluntarily engaging in the sexual conduct and being in those spaces consuming drugs, consuming alcohol, and things of that nature. Um, so certainly either going to deny outright, and if there has been confirmed activity, then that the activity was consensual. You know, and at the center of these freak offs, a lot of people, and it's been kind of hearing in the background a little bit when it comes to this case of other celebrities being involved. At this point in time, given that we're past the month of Diddy being behind bars, and, you know, there's always been this alluding to other celebrities being involved, that their names are going to be dropped. Why do you think at this stage in the investigation, in the case, that we haven't heard any other names beyond Sean Combs? 
you know, it's still pretty early in the proceedings. I think it's only been about a month or a month and a half since he's been arraigned and held um, in detention. And so the investigations are always going to be a continuous and ongoing process. I'm sure at this point there's been an exchange of discovery. And not only that, but I think there's been a gag order placed on the attorneys with information that they can and cannot share. Um, but more importantly, it's still very early on. So my, my guess would be that the attorneys on both sides are trying to keep as a, information as close to their chest as possible because they don't want to scare off any witnesses. They don't want to hopefully taint the jury, um, and they want to keep the integrity of their investigation. As things continue on forward and discovery is explored, and we start to get to the hearing stage, motions and hearing stage, where they're moved to dismiss the charges and things like that, or request relief for hearings, then we may start to get a little bit more information on what other individuals may have been involved. Mm. And certainly, if this case makes it to trial, we will absolutely more than likely know what other celebrities may have been involved or what other, what other individuals have been involved. And how crucial will... Sean Combs's associates be those who had worked for Bad Boy Records or Bad Boy Enterprise or any of his conglomerate of enterprises that he had had. How important will their testimony be if they are called as witnesses for the government in their in their case? How important could they be in kind of piecing together? Hey, this is what happened at this time. This is how we did this. And what could that look like, even though we're still months away from the trial? Those those witnesses are going to be crucial. Now, the interesting part here is that the government is going to try to leverage these individuals against Mr. Combs. What they're going to do is say, hey, you know, John Smith, for a hypothetical name, we know that you did X, Y, and Z, that you participated and that you committed these acts, which furthered the enterprise and furthered this activity. We will charge you unless you want to get ahead of this and cooperate with us as a witness, you know, for our investigation and for our prosecution. And so those individuals are going to be very crucial. There's going to be other questions, you know, legal questions that those those individuals have, will have to figure out and dig through if they're going to waive their waive specific rights, if they're going to have any immunity. Um, all of those things are legal things that are going to have to we're going to have to get around before we get to the point of them testifying, before you know they decide what position they're going to take on this case, because they can be equally liable as Mr. Combs if they are found or viewed in the eyes of the government as a part of that enterprise. Now, say you're on the Diddy defense team, what kind of angles and pulls are you going to be doing to defend your client if you were his, on his defense team? You know, as a part of Mr. Combs' defense thing, team, I think that we would first have to figure out what was the catalyst for all of these allegations, number one, which I think Ms. Ventura's, you know, allegations certainly were that. But taking things step by step, we need to explore each and every witness. We need to launch our own investigation and have our investigators and things of that nature go out and speak to these individuals. Um, we need to be able to be realistic with what our expectations are and really get to the evidence. You know, sometimes what happens is the government can make an allegation against somebody and it looks bad when you hear it. But when you actually dive into the evidence, when you see these videos and you see this footage or you speak to these witnesses, it oftentimes creates a narrative that, that completes the picture that may not be as bad as what it could be or what you would think it was on paper. And I know that's bad and people may not want to hear that. And I'm not saying that that, that would re absolve him from all liability. But at the end of the day, we have to take things step by step, one piece at a time and get, get through each witness, get through every allegation. And sometimes there are ways that we can explain away normal conduct. Like we're not going to criminalize sex in this country. You know, we're not going to criminalize buying baby oil and other things of that nature. Now, certainly if it's with a minor or if someone had, had done these things at, not at their own will, then we have a different conversation. But we've got to be very careful, explore the facts, exploit those facts in terms of crafting and creating our defense. All right, and I guess we'll have to wait and see how this all continues to play out. And I'm sure you and I will continue to have more conversations along the way. Safa, thank you so much for your time today. I always appreciate it. Before we sign you off, anything else you'd like to add? Thanks for having me. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Safa. Appreciate your time as always. Sean Combs pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution. His next court date is slated for next month, and his trial is slated for May of next year. All right, so that's where we at with the Diddy saga, just so that y'all fully understand. 
What do you think? Put it in the comments. Make sure you go check out the new Lord Dirk video that I just put up. It's hot. It's doing good. And make sure you hit the notification bell if you haven't hit the notification bell already so you know when I'm going to be dropping these videos. And you already know my Instagram is on the screen at the top. My cash app is up there. Dollar sign Unique Mecca Audio. Hit the icon. Make sure it saves was created in 2020. Then go follow me right there at the Instagram on the top. See Diddy? All right? Through. Got him trapped in a cell. It's a wrap. All right? Cheers, 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 the crime, 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 the Yes, you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully, posse, and put it in hall. Uh, he cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. The Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get Jews from a kingpin. Uh, How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do uh -huh. it. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on. Your probably the reason that him and your grams got along. A man that generated millions on the block. Uh -huh. This time, never squill it to the cops, make an audio. Hey. G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beam so shine. Yeah. I let Shorty go, she was wine. Yeah. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper uh. dead. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Clear. No cap, it's a raw enough town. Yeah. Baby, whore enough town, Dominican bust down. Word. Now we on the positive, Word. you we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take heed, homie, lend an ear. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown, but now uptown. it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's nope. about buying property to make the community ours. So we can get back to the...